Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Today we're in the Outpost campground here in the uh, Fayetteville area. This is the New River Gorge National Park area. And uh, the gentleman's got a water heater that is not working. Seems like most people have a water heater, they kind of like it to work. And uh, so this is not doing that. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on and maybe we can fix it. Y'all, uh, I might need a hand, so y'all get ready, and uh, let's get started. I thought this was interesting. Uh, this is uh, this is new to him, and uh, he had a fire a couple weeks ago. And uh, the funny thing was, he said he was he was went sitting in the driveway and he was washing his car. And he looked over here, and the camper was on fire, and uh, he just had the water hose in his hand and sprayed it and it went out <laughs> uh, I think it's odd that it was apparently the gas line was leaking where it goes on the valve uh, he had an RV tech in another town work on this I love it put uh, put Teflon tape on a uh, oh, on a fitting that should not have Teflon tape but I'm gonna spray that with a little soapy water before I even start because I want to see for myself that it's not leaking anymore. I'm satisfied it's not leaking. Now, let's see if we can figure out why the water here is not working. Customer did tell me that I uh, recently got a new uh, heating element. I want to uh, I want to access these thermostats real quick. Okay, well... I think I see why it's not working on electric. See the on off switch, the rocker switch, the one I never touch, it's off. Doesn't feel real good, but I bet that'll make a difference. Tell you what, I'm gonna pull that cover off that heating element right there and make sure we got power on the heating element. We just did a video the other day on a suburban water heater where we did away with that switch. Um, it's because those switches are notorious to go bad. But this one was actually turned off. And of course, there's only two, two screws in this heating element cover because nobody ever puts the hard one back. I did the other day though, didn't I? Did y'all see that? Did I video that? Oh, I think it is in there. That third one is in there. Oh, it is. Well, isn't that special? I just noticed something. The, uh, the gas line's not even hooked to the burner assembly. Somebody had that line off. Never put it back. So I think I'm gonna get the burner assembly out of my way so I can get to the heating element. All we have to do is take this nut off the bottom here since somebody's already taken the gas line off. We'll get the burner assembly out of the way. And we might still need to take that gas line off, but maybe not. Let's see what we can do. They just put that screw in a terrible, terrible place. Sometimes you can put a universal joint on it and get it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked to see that screw is even in that cover. Because usually if somebody has that, gets that screw out, they never put it back. Maybe we can get it with a straight screwdriver like we did on that last one. Oh, yeah. Huh. 
Okay. We got it. Now, let's see if we have any power on the heating element. Not, we'll have to dig a little bit deeper. Have 112.3 across the heating element, so it should be working. Yep, should be working. All that, just to see if it was working. So I'm gonna put all that back together, and then we'll go hunting for why it's not working on gas. All right, is it is it all? It is already starting to heat up on electric. Now I'm gonna go cut the gas side on. See what happens when we cut the gas on. not reading the flames probably gonna need a board that's probably what he was doing back here behind the commode I say the board's not reading the flame it's lighting yeah but it just keeps trying to ignite and goes out uh -huh. so it probably needs a board that's what he was doing back here behind the commode well that's what I'm gonna put a new board in really yeah okay well it ain't working really Striking. Yeah, because it's not reading the flame. Well, it's right in there, right? Oh, it's over time. Okay, that's what. That's what. Yeah, hang on. That's not a new board. Well, it's a. Uh, it, it's a different one. The one that was in there. Okay. Well, as y'all probably heard, it was lighting, but it was not reading the flame. The board wasn't reading the flame, so it never quit striking. And then, you know, in a few seconds it would it would go out and it would reignite and just kept doing that. That's just because it was not reading the flame. So let's stick a new dinosaur board in there real quick and see if it works better. Okay. Yep, there you go folks. That's exactly why I don't deal in used parts. He had another guy, the, this gentleman had another guy work on this thing. He put a good used board in there and it wasn't any good. So we'll put him a dinosaur in there and he won't have any more trouble. So, there's our new dinosaur board and it's working just like it ought to. That pop off out. Still does it's dripping a little bit. A little just bit. Every now and then. Do you have a do you have a pressure regulator on your water line? Yes. Okay. Uh I mean those things go bad too. Okay. Uh, well and it, you see it drips maybe once every 30 seconds or so. Right. Okay. Yes it yeah, does. Probably 20 seconds. I have Sometimes they're just dirty. I've, I've kind of tried to flush it a little bit. Yeah, feel that water? It's good. It's good. Yeah, that's 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 the electric side. Kind of like I say, you just get a chunk of dirt in them or something. Yeah. But they they wear out also. Sure. They uh, they're only only reading. Uh, temperature, but they also read pressure. So Got if it. you get too much pressure mm -hmm. or too much heat, mm -hmm. it's supposed to bleed the pressure off. Right. Well, that may have stopped it. It's yeah. getting ready to drip, but that might just be residual. I'm okay with it where it's at. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Honestly, that's something I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Get, get a new Just one. Pull that off real quick. Get that out of the way. Okay. You want to last for that door? I do, because it, it melted it somehow. Yeah. Well, it's plastic. Oh, okay. Um, if you got one. Oh, yeah. I should. I say I do. I should. <laughs> that's something I tend to keep on the truck. But I would imagine. Sometimes, sometimes I sell them and forget to replace them. 
Let me see if I got a latch. Okay. I think it's a whopping two bucks or something. Well, there you have it, folks. There is uh, fixing your water heater. Uh, the gentleman had no idea about that switch. And he didn't even know where the switch for the gas side was. So we found it. But we fixed the gas side with a with a dinosaur UIBS board. It's all good to go. So y'all get good to go. Get down in that comment section. Leave me a comment, a criticism, a concern. Whew, I'm done for the day. This is, this is number three job. And I'm done. I'm going to the house. Y'all have a good day. All right. Bonus footage. Y'all might have saw that the pop-off valve was leaking. As the water started heating up, it just was leaking worse and worse. So he's like, yeah, let's go ahead and change it. So, y'all gonna get some bonus footage. Let's change pop-off valve. Yeah, that water's good and hot already. Relieve the pressure. Get the appropriate size socket for the uh, for the anode rod slash plug. Drops said socket. Get smaller ratchet. Get that plug out of there. Might as well just let her all go. Oops, sorry. Did y'all get any on you? A little bit. Not bad. Let's go ahead and put new Teflon tape on this plug slash anode rod. Good, the blue stuff. Put it on there the right way. Don't put it on barkers. If you put your Teflon tape on barkers when you go to spin your plug or fitting or whatever you're working on your uh, all your teflon tape will just come right off so we'll go ahead and spin that back in so we didn't have to drain all of the water to change the pop-off valve but hey just figured let's get the old water out of there and put some new water in water can get a little nasty in these water heaters because it kind of gets trapped kind of gets trapped at the top um it just can't uh it can't get out so you get this flue out of the way just to make getting that pop off valve a little easier get a little better access to it Just like that one the other day, got three screws in it. Get that right out of the way. Grab a hold of this pop-off valve with the biggest pair of channel locks I have. And hopefully, spin that bad boy out of there. They can be a little bit tough now, I ain't gonna lie. I stand up. Maybe a 12 inch crescent to get it started. Brought the big pipe wrench too, just in case. It's just, it's kind of far back in there. So it's just kind of awkward to, to uh, get any leverage. Oh. And it's round. That makes it tough too. Hey, what? Use an old trick my mamma taught me.
that puppy is tight. I actually broke the side of it out. Go get a cheater pipe. I can just I can feel myself bleeding already. Well, not yet, but I can I can feel it coming. Oh, here we go. All I gotta do is get it moving. And then I, uh, it'll come out pretty good after that. really a little bit nervous it was gonna break break at the threads in the water here and that puppy was tight all right that one has three quarter inch threads the one I got out of the truck being all proactive and being ready is a half inch so let me go get a let me go get a three quarter inch. I got the three quarter. It already comes with uh, like a paste sealer on it. It's dry. Uh, so I usually don't put any tape on them when they come from the factory with sealer. And this does not have to be as crazy tight as it was before either. Just, just tight. Y'all get one more turn on. How you doing? Great, man. How are you? Good. You got any time when you finish here? Uh. What you got going on? I put in a new black and gray water uh, level measurement. I, yes. I don't know how to hook it up to power. I just need to make a ground connection and a 12 volt connection to the wires I've got. Do you know which wires are what? Yeah, I know. Oh. Well, I know as far as going into the monitor, yeah. I just don't know where to hook them or, or what the best place to hook them in. Oh, I may not either. Okay. Did, did they not come with instructions? Well, I just don't know what's what on my 12 volt system. I can't. I just need to hook it up to 12 volt power somehow. Okay. I don't want to interrupt you. Where are you at? Uh, that uh, class A at right at the end of the parking lot. I, I'll come over and look and see what you got. Great. Can't, can't promise you nothing. I understand. I appreciate it. Okay. So, I think that's going to be tight enough, and uh, let's go uh, put some water on it, and we'll see if it leaks. If it ain't good, we'll have to retighten it. Oh, try to rise a bone. Well, there you have, folks. There's getting your really, really stuck pop-off valve out of your water heater and putting in a new one. So y'all wasn't even uh, y'all wasn't even counting on bonus footage, was you? I guess we got to go over here and look at these tank sensors. Y'all heard that guy? That's why I hate coming in campgrounds when campgrounds are busy. There's always somebody that's go, hey, while you're here. All right. Well, let me get settled up with this guy. We'll go look at the tank sensors. Is anything interesting? Heck, I might bring y'all back. Other than that, catch y'all later.